it's me Julia I am back again with another kiln opening I think it's number 26 um, I've just wanted a little uh, bit of time to say thank you so much I have reached 1000 subscribers and I'm absolutely so grateful um, it was a little goal of mine for this year to get to 1,000 subscribers. So by you know by the end of April is amazing. I really really wish that I could put more content out more frequently for you, but my health is and has been for a very long time an issue. I have ME and fibromyalgia and chronic migraine and you know all of those kinds of ridiculous things. And so I'm really limited to how much content I can put out. Um, but I do, you know, I have a plan, I have a list and I'll get around to it. My channel would grow much quicker, I'm sure, um, if I could actually put content out more frequently. But I have to take care of my health first, obviously. Um, without further ado though, I shall get on with the kiln opening. It's a ball kiln again. Um, just the way things go, they, they are a little bit easier for me to make. So, you know, days that I can, I do things like that. Um, I do find building new constructions a little bit more difficult these days. So, you know, bear with me, I'm trying my best. So the first thing I have is a piece from the community kiln and I'll try to remember what was on it because I forgot to, um, mark it down so just a little dot ball in buff just like more like a little dish it's not really a bowl it's not really a plate it was just the last piece of clay that i had um and there is um raspberry mist i think probably just one raspberry mist and uh make or rose quartz and then, actually no, it was Mako Rose Quartz all over and then I did some dots. So there was Raspberry Mist, uh, a couple of other types of dots and like pinks, Weeping Plum, there was a, a couple of pink type dots and then I did some Light Flux use w's whatever you want to call it and then i gave like one light coat in pink gloss because that was all there was left so that's what that one has come out like but it's super pretty and i know a lot of people have a problem with rose quartz but on a slow community kiln is slow to 12 10 uh, 100 degrees an hour and then a 30 minute hold at the top and it does seem to come out nice the sorry i'm really really exhausted today my brain's not functioning yet um the drippiness you know has only kind of gone to about here so this is all the the rose quartz in the middle and it will have the um what was the other one i said something gloss anyway that will have one little cut over that as well yeah it's gonna be another one of those days right so kiln's cool so I should get in I was asked last I asked last time what kind of colors would you like to see and somebody said oranges and somebody said greens so there are in theory kind of those colors but i don't have orange as a base to use so we'll see what i did right okay um okay not quite as orange as i thought so we'll start with the first one right i'll have to get my phone i have it all logged on my phone um this one so First of all, the form, I've done these very natural forms with raw edges. I think that's what people are calling things these days, raw edges. And they are, I'm calling them like a rocker ball because 
they're not flat on the bottom so they should move a little bit um because uh, i've done like a rounded form i have done some with an outer bump like this is like a small cobblestone that i did with a let me see if i can find you the sorry excuse the noise of my chair i did it with this so this was a solid form that dried for quite a long time with lots of dints kind of like a little moon it's really heavy but it makes this kind of texture which is gorgeous i love it and i forgot that i had it or that i liked it and so i did a few bowls with that so inside now i did um because i didn't have an orange i mixed some of my celadons just trying to get back in my phone there. I mixed some of my celadons and this one I did equal amounts of poppy and marigold to make what I believe is tangelo. I'm sure that's what those two uh, colours are. And then I gave it a little bit of amaryllis because in my theory amaryllis has a base of coral. I don't really, I don't think the coral is really orange but I kind of figured um, some of the other bowls with amaryllis had orange bits to them so I thought it might bring out more orange but there is an orange tint to it that's maybe not coming quite through on the camera but it does have more of an orange whereas the ones that I did with marigold you could see there was a yellow behind it but this one definitely has more or oh, you can see a bit better there more of an orange behind it I would be really interested to actually see what that was like on its own because uh, oh you can actually there are some dots of orange coming through which are from the amaryllis um so the poppy marigold mix with three coats then just one amaryllis and one blossom flux I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I really do love this kind of raw form um, with you know an uneven edge and a, a kind of uneven texture on it. I think obviously with a rocking ball you don't want to put a hot liquid in it but I think that's super cute and for all you pinkies out there it's another one. But yeah, I I mean, I just really, Amaryllis is my favourite thing in the whole world, as you'll see. Um, because I have another Amaryllis in there. Let's take my little half shelf off. Right. Ooh. Okay, let's have a look at this one. thought this might do this. <laughs> So, <laughs> you should know better, Julia. This is blue rutile and um, one, so two blue rutile, one blue legume. It is a sphere for my garden. And I didn't know, it wouldn't sit on a stilt and I didn't know how to fire it. And it's so heavy, it wouldn't have gone on my wire, nor my bead rack. So I figured I'd wipe the bottom back and put it on a little raised stilt, not a stilt, raised cookie. However, I know things with channels run much more. And putting blue rutile and blue lagoon, lagoon being, you know, watery, um, yeah, it will knock off, but it'll take some of the glaze off and it's the end of my little stilted cookie but that's fine it will knock off but really nice kind of uh, texture one there because i don't think i have a blue one i have a blue decal one but i don't have a blue glaze one um, i have like a really long piece of driftwood i wonder if you could see it 
No, probably not. I'll take you outside next time and show you. It's a really long piece of driftwood and it's got all the different spheres that I've made hanging from it. It's very raw and um, basic, but I like it. Yeah, so I love those colours. I love the browns that it's breaking. It's a shame that it's stuck to the cookie because it will cause a little bit of work, but I'll get it off no problem because it's not majorly stuck. But he'll look nice on my uh, garden decoration. Right, next, next. This one is just, um, just, ah, that's not what I thought. This one is the opposite of this one. So it has bumps on the inside and a plain bottom. And is two coats of chun plum and two coats of kimchi on whites. And it's another little raw edge rock and ball. I really like the colours that it's broken. It's almost too much glaze. Can you see? I don't know if you can see, there's a slight, slight, slight pitting in the bottom, but it's not as teeny slight. Any more glaze than that would have been too much. But I didn't think that the chumplum would run so much with the kimchi, but clearly it does. Maybe three quarts all together. So two chum plum, one kimchi, or one chum plum, two kimchi, I think would probably give a slightly different result. But look at the blues. That's like a bluey purple. Kimchi on its own is so pale, but it seems to, other colors do seem to bring out the best in kimchi. Yeah, like that one too. And again, it's got that little kind of, you can't really see it on my hand, but it like it has a little kind of bit of movement. I like these. Right, next, next, I'll just lean over. <laughs> Ooh, oh, okay. I think I know what this is. I'll let you look while I'm looking. My phone keeps switching off. Um, oh. This is just Vert Luster on its own three chords. I'm gonna call Vert Luster. It's giving a little bit of seaweed vibes. And it, I think it has that almost metallic -y sheen to it. Look at that shine though. Look at that reflection of the light. Can you see the color well there? Let me see if I can wear, I can shade it a little bit. No. Anyway, that's that. This is kind of a moon crater. So it would be similar to what I did on the ball, but on the bottom of the dish. I love that texture as well. Just a couple, I think there's three different sizes on that one. Really nice. I like that art deco. I would like to make a nice art deco piece styled, you know, like in an art deco style with that glaze on, see what it looked like. But it pulls this like a teeny little bit in the bottom there where it pulls into like a little That's the bit that with seaweed would look really metallic-y, but with this one, it's just kind of slightly lighter shade. But I love that. I think I did try Art Deco before on its own, but I thought this time I'd done it over texture. And clearly I didn't, but there's a green. <laughs> right, last one on this shelf, and there's not a lot underneath because it's a bigger ball, is Another try at orange with another size. This is a slightly larger one with the outy bubbly texture. We'll call this one outy. This one's inny. 
or we can call this one moon crater and cobblestone i don't know whatever um let's have a look you have a look at the pretty ball so this one is that that one? Oh, that is that one so i did the same thing with the celadon and tried um to mix an orange but i used snapdragon which is a stronger red um as opposed to the poppy and the marigold 50 50 and that made it did look more ready but i figured you know it might still come out more orange so this is um three of the mix of snapdragon marigold one amaryllis and with this one instead of blossom flux i've done light flux by Mako to see what the difference is and i think you can see on this the blossom flux and the light flux i think you're getting more of that cloudiness with the light flux but i don't know if it's there can you see there is more orange in the background with that one like all of these are really quite uh bright orange so that's the difference very similar but a poppy base and a snapdragon base mixed with the marigold but both very nice little pink set Try not to break them yeah i love this i'm a bit obsessed with this i keep changing my mind about which balls i'm using and which you know for keeping from a coffee table but they're just all so lovely when they come out of the can again a little raw edged rock and ball fabulous okay next kiln shall okay was it? I'm getting to the point where I need some new kiln tiles, but I'm still making them work for the time being. Oh, I forgot to look. Oh, yay. This is more greens in this section. Oh, right. I'll stop you in and start letting you have a look. Wow. Now, let me go back in let's see i'll just move this around a bit let's see let's see so that's that one. Oh, wow right so this is on the rich toasted with the big dots it does have a flat bottom but not a huge bottom if you know what i mean this is honeydew flux two coats with seaweed two coats look at that it is almost like a mirror it's almost like glass well it is glass that was a stupid thing to say but it is almost like a mirror I do say some stupid things because my brain, with having a neurological condition, my brain doesn't work properly. <laughs> so yeah, I do say silly things, but no, it's just part of me. Gorgeous, absolutely love that. Now it's bringing blues and kind of browns. So for those of you who wanted me to try greens, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Wow. That might be my new favorite green combo because it's just, you wouldn't think that you would get that out of a honeydew flux and seaweed. 
I'm just going to look in the... Yeah, the blues. That's amazing. And I love the... That I've gone just down one instead of just doing around the very edge. I like that extra bit of glaze on there. Oh, I love that one. Oh, I might have to do a set in that one. <laughs> I love them too much. Some of you have said you really love how much I love my pottery. I just do, you know, it just is the way that it is. Okay, what's this one? Oh, okay, I think this little one, again, a tiny little rock and ball with the um, outy pebble texture on the inside and this little beauty. Where is it? Is that that one? That's that one. That's that one. I've had that one. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's three ivy. Now, so Mako Ivy is a big runner. And I wanted to see what it was doing on texture. And, hmm. I do like the way that it breaks and it is that kind of like semi, like a satin kind of look, but I feel like too much round to the middle. So maybe, cause that was three coats, cause I figured I'll see what three coats does because three coats on the outside, you're, you're in disaster territory. Um, but I thought, you know, I could play on the inside, but it all moves so much that I don't think I needed to have three coats on there. It's lovely. It has that kind of almost metallic-y bit in the bottom. It's lovely, but yeah, I think I prefer the Art Deco Green. This kind of reminds me like a little bit like a shell, if that makes sense. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, so another little rock and ball. There's like a little kiln full of rock and balls. Right. Oh, here's something different. This isn't a ball. This is a scarab. Now, I haven't done a scarab for a while. The last one I did, I think it was a big one. And uh, I wanted to try and do one with the white clay. So I had some white clay left over and it is not typical in nature to have a red beetle. But I have green, I have a few different greens. I think I've got fog, I've got a June bug, I've got like a variety of different colours of them and I kind of wanted to just have one in there, a ready pinky shade. So here's my little carved through. You can see all the way through, back to front. I love, I forget how much I love, but I love carving these. They are just such a, just carving out clay, is such a good thing. It's, you know, it's just plain, isn't it? And that is in two coats of sangria on white. I know it's not identical to, uh, you know, it's not nature specific, is it? But I like them and they're cute. He's a little, he's quite wide, this one, but they all have their own little identity, their own little personality, if you would, because they, they're just all so different. Not, you know, then like the ones that were made in Egypt, they were made in a mold. They were all individually handmade. And if you look, I've looked quite a lot at a Pharaoh called Hatshepsut. And if you look at her, uh, all her scarab beetles that were in her tomb with her, there wasn't two that looked the same. And even the inscriptions in the hieroglyphs on the bottom were different from one to another, even though they all said Hatshepsut. They, you know, it was different people's different handwriting. So yeah, I'm, I'm all about just 
doing what feels good for you. Okay, next, next, next. Ooh, light pink. This one, let's have a look. What's this little dishy? Oh, okay. So this was two blossom flux and two chum plum. I figured while I had the chum plum out that I would have a little play because I'm nearly at the bottom of the tub of it now. Two blossom flux, two chun plum that is actually a really yummy pink and i prefer to that one that's more on the purple side but that if you're on to light pinks that is a really really yummy light pink so blossom flux under because i think i've mostly done the fluxes out on the top um, but wow I really like that gorgeous little ball that again with the texture done with the uh, ball <laughs> no cracks <laughs> shouldn't be anyway because these are all one piece Oh, it just pinged itself. <laughs> These are all one piece, so this should be, oh, apart from that one, that was dots. Um, they should all be good. Right, two more pieces. Here we go. Another green. Let's have a look what green you are. And that is, ooh, wow, okay. This is two honeydew flux and two seaweeds. Quite runny. I only did to there, so this is, this is another little dotty ball. Gorgeous, I love that. What was the other one I loved? That one. They're just different things, aren't they? I can't choose. I love that for a lighter. Wow. And you're still getting some breaking. So I've got a little bit of texture up here where I've smoothed them down and you're getting a little breaking green, a little breaking brown. I really love that. That is mm, perfect color for my house. Oh, I actually really, really like that little ball. That is so cute. It actually would be nice on a pedestal, that one, wouldn't it? Oh, I really, really like that one. <laughs> oh, so, you know, Good greens so far. So for this green and orange experiment, greens are definitely winning. Right, last but not least. Ooh, wow. Is that the same as that one? No, it can't be. I did different ones. Let me see. Oh! Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Um, ancient copper rim. On the rich toasted, ancient copper rim. And two seaweed, two emerald falls. Wow. So I only did the copper like here, just around the edge and on this back. I could have maybe brought it over a teeny bit more, but I didn't, I kind of didn't want to distract away from the green. But oh, that green seaweed and emerald 
balls. Wow. This is like done so that I have like two dots and then two dots. So it's kind of more like a flower. <gasps> Love that. Love the bowl. And oh, oh man. Am I now a green girl rather than a pink girl? Oh, I don't think I can top these greens. Okay, I've done blues, I've done greens, I've done pinks and I've tried to do oranges. Thank you. <laughs> what colour next? What colour next? I'm gonna maybe try and mix colours that I don't think go together. What do you think? So what if I did something green with something amaryllis? Mm. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Something with a darker background with kimchi or something blue with it. I've got quite a few glazes that I need to use up that I'm not touching. So I've got like Galaxy, Blue Hydrangea. Um, I've got a couple of Duncan ones, Renaissance ones that I really don't like. Uh, I might start doing random combos to see what they come out like. Because, I mean, I'm getting such great results but it would be, I feel like they're more predictable because I'm sticking to kind of colour groups. So maybe I should do a little bit that's out of my comfort zone because I feel now I'm like getting quite good with glazes. So I need to push the bar a little bit. What, what do you think? Give me some advice. But oh that green i think my favorite has to come from the greens but oh, that one is can you see it's quite different from that one but this definitely has more blues to it but also that one In fact, the great greens are all on the buff toasted, rich toasted clay. It would be interesting to see how these colours come out on white. So maybe I'm going to do that. But I don't think I could choose. That was my favourite, but I think it's going to be between these two. And how do you choose between light and dark? I love the light and I really really love that green on there I'm not sure you're getting the whole colour I hope you are <gasps> wow that one looks more art deco to me than that one so right I'm going to stop waffling on now um I'm going to try to do a tutorial for Kintsugi that's my next um, tutorial video, but I've been meaning to do it for, since the last kiln opening, and I haven't, just because I just haven't had the energy. Um, you know, and if I do other things, I don't have the energy for part B, and sometimes not even have the energy for anything. <laughs> I'm not moaning. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I can't do anything about it. And if I moan and be miserable about it, it's not gonna change it. So, um, you know, just get on and do what I can. Don't moan about what I can't. So that's kind of my little philosophy. But I'm really, I love the results of glazing. I don't particularly love glazing. Um, but I need to get on and do some more bowls so that we can have some more experiments. So thank you so much guys. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you and all of you who reach out in the comments, I always reply. 
Um, I'm just so grateful that you enjoy these kiln openings and uh, you know any other content that I could put out there. I need to do the top five and the top ten glazes as well. I want to do top ten glazes for um, my overall experience but I also want to do uh, the five glazes that I would buy if I was a beginner again because I would not buy in the order that I did uh, because I know so much more now and uh, I would like to do a beginner series of tut like tut tutorial videos as well because it would be nice to see a journey of tutorial videos and um, so they'll be like you know for a different group of people probably right okay be quiet Julia <laughs> Thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful day and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.